Hi, I'm Connie Cleveland. I'm back today to talk to you a little bit more about this subject of proofing, that final stage of development for our obedience dogs. When I was 21 years old, I saw Diane Bauman in the ring with a golden retriever named Meadow Pond Femme de Fortune. She was an obedience trial champion and she just amazed me. That dog never failed. Not only was she an amazing performer, she was incredibly accurate. She just never failed. Now, I've been around a lot of really good obedience dogs, but I had never seen anything like this dog's consistency. And I remember thinking that it was a completely new concept for me, and I wanted to learn how to do that. Well, at that time, Diane introduced me to this subject or concept of proofing, and that is teaching your dogs exactly what you will and will not allow when they are performing. My second obedience trial champion was a dog named Heron Acres, Mr. Ryan, and he was incredibly consistent, in large part because of what I learned from Diane about proofing. I think in his entire career he only failed open twice and he failed utility maybe five or six times. I want to try to get you to understand proofing and how it's going to help you so that you can be that successful. And in order to do so, you need to understand that when you show your dog how to solve the problem of an obedience exercise, you also need to teach him what you will not allow. So let's start with the simplest exercise, the sit-stay. There are only two mistakes that a dog can make on the sit-stay, two ways that he can fail. Okay, in part one of this video series, what is proofing? I said that every exercise had a finite number of mistakes and the sit stay only has two. He can get up or he can lie down. So if you were going to use proofing, you would start by trying to get your dog to make the mistake of getting up. How might you do that? Well, when I start to proof the sit stay, the first mistake that I'm proofing for is getting up and the first distraction that I use is myself. I start by moving from side to side. I walk around the dog. I might kneel down like I'm going to tie my shoe or jump up. Okay, I want the dog to understand no matter what I do, he's not allowed to get up. Next, I use distractions that are auditory. Maybe I ask somebody to knock on the door or the wall. Finally, I'm going to use another person to talk to my dog and see if they can actually entice my dog to get up. Now, in that process, as I use all those distractions, I'm hoping that my dog is going to have kind of an epiphany where he says, Oh, I get it. I should not get up no matter what the distraction is. What Connie's trying to teach me is that no matter what happens, I should never get up. So your dog is no longer learning to avoid individual distractions. He's understanding that getting up is always the mistake. Notice something. I have suggested a lot of different types of distractions, but they were all trying to cause the same error. I'm working on one error at a time. And at the beginning of the sit stay, it's getting up. I had a student come to me in conversation one day and she said she was frustrated because her dog was lying down. Uh, when she left him in a sit stay, he was lying down. She said she'd done all the things that I mentioned, moved around, dropped objects, um, she'd had the dog sit and stay while she fixed his dinner, she'd even had him sit and stay while she opened the door, uh, acting like she was going to let him out. Well, wait a minute. I asked her what mistake she expected her dog to make when she moved around or when she was fixing his dinner. And she replied, well, he might have gotten up. Well, what about when you were opening the door? And again, her answer was, well, he would have gotten up. Realize something. You're in that situation, she was proofing for the wrong error. The mistake that the dog was making was lying down. She needed to entice him to lie down. She wasn't going to stop him from lying down by using distractions that would cause him to get up. So proofing is not just adding a bunch of random, sometimes diabolical distractions. 
proofing should be making sure that you know what error you're trying to cause and sticking to that error until your dog seems to understand what behavior it is that you will not allow. Now you've heard me say several times that the mistakes that dogs can make are finite. The types of distractions that you use are limited by your imagination. I'll bet you could come up with dozens of distractions that you would think might cause your dog to get up. But notice that all the distractions should be causing the same error and the errors that a dog can make, the failing errors, are really finite. How about another example? The second mistake that a dog can make on a sit stay is lying down. So if I want my dog to understand that he cannot lie down, what kinds of distractions would I use? Well, I would put the dog in a place where he typically was allowed to lie down. Uh, I have a big ottoman in my living room and so I'll sit the dogs on the ottoman and go sit on the couch. Well, they sleep there all the time, so I sit down on the couch and invariably they just lie right down because they assume dogs are situational that that's exactly what they're going to be allowed to do there. They can't imagine that I would want them to sit on the ottoman. How else might I add a distraction that would cause my dog to lie down? I might have a training partner just gently walk over and tell my dog to lie down. Okay, now I know your skepticism. You're thinking, well sure Connie, the sit stays easy. There are only two mistakes. But some exercise, like the broad jump, the go out, the retrieve over the high jump, there are a ton of mistakes that dogs can make on those exercises. Well, that's not really true. Every exercise has a finite number of mistakes that the dog can make, and you can systematically proof your dog so that he understands that all of those things are mistakes that you will not allow him to perform that way. I also know that many of you may be getting a little nervous about causing mistakes because you're not exactly sure you know how to respond to him when he makes mistakes. And that is a legitimate concern. And I would like to have another conversation with you about that. You need to be comfortable responding to your dog's errors. And I want to teach you how to respond. Remember why we're doing this. If your dog knows how to perform, as well as knows what you will not allow, your qualifying rate is going to go up. You're not going to come out of the ring saying, he's never done that before. I want you to be sure that every time you enter, you're going to qualify. I want you to feel that prepared. Well, I think I've given you plenty to think about, and I'd like to keep this conversation going, so I'm going to send you one more video to talk a little bit more about this subject. But in the meantime, I'd like you to think about the mistakes that your dogs make. There are only two mistakes on the sit stay. There are only three mistakes he can make on the recall and only five mistakes that he can make on the retrieve. So I'd like to give you an assignment. I want to see if you can make a list of the mistakes your dog could make on a recall and the mistakes your dog could make on the retrieve on the flat. The next time we talk, we'll compare lists and we'll see how you did. Now, don't make this idea of proofing more complicated than it needs to be. Remember, proofing is not just setting up crazy situations that frighten or confuse your dog. There's really only two things I want you to remember. You are setting up situations or distractions that are going to cause your dog to make a specific error so that you can teach him that you will not allow that behavior. And every exercise has a finite number of failing mistakes. Meanwhile, if you're enjoying this conversation, shoot me an email or share it with your friends. It is my heart's desire to help you improve your obedience performance. We can do that if we can get you to qualify every time you walk into the ring. I'll talk to you soon.